Hey everybody, uh, this is Charlie Dobbins, and this is the next uh, in the series of the group coaching calls. Uh, I'm going to start to pick up on a couple of uh, themes here. Uh, this is going to be the first of a, of a um, maybe a two or three part series as it relates to the the documents that you need uh, when you start to get your uh, your deal going. Um, and it's all really going to tie into the uh, crowdfunding platform because I see a lot of people. Uh, when they're able to go on and start looking at that crowdfunding platform, it really kind of uh, crystallizes everything that they need to do in order to get a deal done. Um, one of the things that uh, is going to we're talking about today is creating the offering package. Um, then in subsequent calls, we're going to talk about the subscri subscription agreement, the operating agreement, um, and the uh, any other documents that you need to have the investor sign. And also, I'm going to talk to you about what their signature on those documents really means. What exactly are they uh, committing themselves to doing? Um, now, the uh, the thing that we're not talking about here and what I'm about to say is very important. So don't gloss over it. What we are going to be talking about from this point through the other document discussions has to do with the documents that we need in order to get somebody to invest in our deal. What should take place before this point is that you've been educating your investors on why they should be investing in multifamily. So when you finally get a deal and you bring it to their attention, they know why. And I can't stress that part enough. I can't get out there and tell you this is what it should be and, and you need to be uh, talking to your customers that way. Uh, this is not a one-step sale. You've got to get to know your clients. They've got to get to know you. So if you're wondering, well, Charlie, how do I do that? <laughs> Jeez, you're a member of the master class. You're a member of the, of the owner forum. Uh, I've already done a call on this and you can find it in the group call coaching call archives. And there's actually a template document that a particular uh, fund uses to educate people towards multifamily. And this is something that you should really uh, get into the hands of your potential investors and start cultivating them now, okay? Uh, so let's uh, move on here. And as I always say, as required by the Massachusetts Office of the Bar Council, uh, I am here to inform you that I'm a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. Get a lawyer. And uh, of course, the, the thing that I used to say was always, or now I'm going to say is everyone, uh, lawyers love LegalZoom because uh, it brings us a lot of business. So if you think you're going to try to you know, cut corners and just create your own legal documents, that's great. Go right ahead. But when you get sued on them and uh, we have to litigate it, uh, we get paid a lot more money to lit litigate than we do to draft. So think twice about uh, using something like LegalZoom. And here's my rule. Here is my rule. If it involves other people's money, hire a lawyer. If it's just your money, go ahead and cut your own corners. It's your money. But when you start to use other people's money, you better hire an attorney. All right. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is really the, the, the cash flow analyzer, how the cash flow analyzer can automatically and, and just create for you a, uh, a property package, an offering package that uh, you use on a uh, on a day to day basis here. Let me just jump on over to the cash flow analyzer right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I'm going to wait for the uh, hold on. I got to jump over here. I'm going to turn it on. Just give me a second while it catches my while my computer catches up. There we go. Okay. Now you've all seen this uh, 
website or this uh, software. For those of you that are new to the owner forum, the master class, uh, you may not have received your link yet. If you have not received your link yet, please send me an email to info at multifamilyinvestingacademy.com and I'll make sure you get this so you can download it to your computer. This is the best software out there for analyzing deals. Now, the, the, what I want to talk to you about today is that most people only get to this part of the screen, the start here button where we put in the input data screen, the rent rolls, the expenses, and we see how good the property looks and we can run a cash flow analysis report and we determine how much we should offer on the deal. But what we don't get to are these sections over here, which is the marketing sections, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today, okay? So let's think about this for a second. You've, you can actually just take your landlord cash flow analyzer software right from the very beginning, inputting the information about the property all the way towards printing out all the different uh, pa offering packages for your investors, all within this software. That's all you're ever going to need. And that's a beautiful thing about it. Um, but let me let me talk to you first about how we're going to set up the deal uh, before we start getting into the marketing. All right, I'm gonna talk about two particular tabs here that some people don't even know exist, which shocks me. If we go up here to Goal Seek, you can click on the Goal Seek button. And this is where you try to figure out what the property is worth or what you should be offering on the property. If the numbers on the property, when you looked at the cash flow an analysis, are not what they need to be, and you need to figure out, well, how do I solve for that? You come over here to the Goal Seek section, and you're, it, all this information will be fill, filled in from the data that uh, it draws from over the input data and the, and the cash flow analysis. And in this particular uh, package, I have not put any information in, so that's why it's drawing blanks. But when you put all, in all the information, all this stuff will be there. But what you want to do is use this drop-down box. You can solve for the purchase price. Uh, you can solve for the uh, fair market value. You can solve for an initial monthly rent. But what we typically use this uh, goal seek function for is to solve for the offer price. So we click on that. And then we say, well, wait a minute. It's, it, it's really a two-part question. We want to solve for X if Y is this. So in our typically what we say is at the cash on cash before tax is, let's say it's 12%. But here's the other thing that you have to take into consideration. It automatically defaults to year five. Well, a lot of you want to get to, so the property is running at 12% in the first year. So make sure you change that number. And then you hit seek answer. And obviously the reference is not valid because there are so all zeros in there right now. So that's how you use the goal seek to figure out what the value, what the pro, what the proper price is is go, or should be, what you should be offering. Okay, fine. We we've solved for that. Now the problem is we got this deal going and it looks really good. So how do we decide how much of the deal we we should keep and how much we should uh, give away? Well, here we come to the partnership uh, module dashboard. Now, keep in mind, these three options here, and now we're going to start getting into the real nitty-gritty of our conversation, how we use this property package, uh, how we use the cash flow analyzer as a offering memorandum. The partner module dashboard here gives you three choices. What we're going to start with is the partner module. We click over here. Now, this part is very important when you're going to create your offering package because it's at this stage of the game that we're starting to choose what the titles of who are, who we are should be okay so so when we input things in here, they end up getting spit out in our final offering package. So we want to make sure that the information we put in this on this side is what's go, what we want to see come out of the final package. First choice is the investor title choice. What do we call our investors? Look at the choices we have. We can call them investors. We can call them members. We can call them LLC members. We can call them LLC investors, limited partners, partners, ticks, tenants and commons. T tenants in common, tenants in common investors. You tell us, you tell the package what you want to call them. Now, 
understand that you better un choose the right terminology. If this is a true tenants in common offering, don't call them members. If this company that they're buying into with their money is a limited liability company, don't call them partners. Make sure your nomenclature, make sure your descriptions are accurate and they are correct, okay? So let's call these people LLC members. And look what happens. It changed all of the uh, wording right here on, the, on all the descriptors. Now, that's also going to be reflected in your final offering package. Now, what are we going to call ourselves? We're the manager. So what do we call? Are we the general partner? Are we the managing partner? Are we the managing member? Are we the LLC manager? Are we the investment manager? You tell us. Just make sure that it matches up with what it says in the offering memorandum, uh, in, in the operating agreement, okay? We're going to call ourselves managing members. Boom, changed everything that way. Now, what do we put over here? Okay, folks, remember, we're dealing or should be dealing with accredited investors. So if we're dealing with accredited investors, what we want to do is make sure that we don't blast our offering package out to the world so everybody can see it. We want to make sure... You know, as we used to say in, in the uh, in, when we're in insurance sales, somebody would say like, "Oh, can you just send it to me?" And they, you know, the the response that you're trained to say is, "The the my my offer or my insurance proposal is attached to my arm. So if you want to see your proposal, you're going to see my arm along with it as well." And the same should be true here. You want to make sure that the offering the the opera the uh, offering memorandum. The marketing information is specific to that person and best if you can, if you have it attached to your arm and you sit down with them as you go over it. Remember, this is a sales and marketing business. Okay, so what we're going to put up here is, you know, um, uh, the person's name. And in this uh, you know, case, we're just going to call him Mr. John Investor. How much of the member, how much is this person buying? Are they buying 25%? Well, if they're buying 25%, that means I'm getting 75%. Now, remember, folks, this, these two blocks right here is what it's all about. Because what this is doing is it's telling us what that offer needs to be in order to give that Mr. John investor the cash on cash return that he needs. Remember, we're trying to solve for 12% cash on cash return. If it's a 12% cash on cash return, and John Investor gets 50%, and I, I know it's for some reason, I can't understand why Doug Software doesn't automatically make this 50% also. If John Investor gets 50% of the deal, and we get the other 50, and we're projecting a 12% cash on cash return, how much is John going to get? What's John's cash and cash return for the money that he brings to the table? The answer is 6%. It's going to be half of the 12. Then you ask yourself, well, geez, wait a minute. John's never going to go for that. John wants 8% return. Well, guess what? If John wants 8%, you're not getting 50. If John wants an 8% return, if the cash investors want 8%, John is going to end up owning 75% of the deal, and you're going to get 25%. Okay? So that's the thing that you need to understand. And I know this for some people, this may sound basic. I'm telling you, folks, I'm shocked at, at some people that, that don't quite get this, that don't realize that, hey, wait a minute, this is, um, uh, you know, I, I had no idea that that's how this, how this works, that I had to, you know, that if it's a 12% return, but I, I give, I, you know, I keep 75% of it, then I'm not giving John investors 12% cash and cash return. No, the property is what's generating the 12%. And if you only own half of the property, you're only getting half of that 12%. Very simple math. You just have to understand the concepts. Now, the other thing, too, that I really like about this program is it's got this preferred return capability. Now, look how Doug has set it up. He set it up so it's a preferred return and then a preferred return on sale. 
All right. And then he allows you to then go and say, well, do we is that preferred return based upon the investor's capital? Is it cumulative? Is it non-cumulative? Is it based upon a minimum return? I mean, so he's given you all these different options. Now, let me explain to you what happens. And I'm going to be totally frank with you guys. I'm going to be totally straight with you. The big question is, do we offer a cumulative return or a non-cumulative return? Let me explain to you the definition, and then let me explain to you how it works in practice. The definition is cumulative means that if you're offering John Investor an 8% cumulative return, that means John Investor gets 8% per year on his investment before you see a dime. And if John doesn't get 8% this year, and he only gets 4%, that means next year, John gets 12% before you see a dime. And if John doesn't get 12% the next year, but he only gets seven, that means the next year, John gets 19% cash on cash return before you see a dime. Now that I've explained it to you that way, do you understand what my next part of this conversation is probably going to be based upon the reality of offering a cumulative return? You better make sure that you can pre perform on that cumulative return or you are not going to see a dime. So a cumulative return sounds great, and it might be what entices John to get into this deal, but you better be able to perform. Maybe you don't offer him an eight. Maybe you only offer him a four. Get creative, but understand the application of these terms and how they could potentially impact your pocketbook in reality, okay? I hope everybody understands that because I'm sitting here in front of my microphone and uh, talking to myself, and I just hope people people get it. All right, so that's how we choose these. So let's say it's going to be an 8% return. We put 8% in here, non-cumulative Apply the preferred return to all non-managing partners. No, we're just going to do it on the managing partners. Total syndication fee. Okay, we're going to do you know fifty thousand dollar total syndic uh, fifty thousand fifty thousand dollar total syndication fee. All right, now let me just explain something here because people kind of get this um, mixed up. If we jump on over here to the uh, input data screen. A lot of times people will put the the uh, closing costs here or um, there's one of this down here. They'll put in some other descriptors, uh, typically in the closing costs. They'll put the $50,000 closing cost, uh, uh, acquisition fee in here. Well, that, that's true. You could absolutely do that. But be, the problem with Doug's software is it doesn't jump on over there for you. So if you put the uh, $50,000 in here, um, you got to make sure you go put it back in the other side as well, because what happens is when you when you first start analyzing the deal, you tend not to put the acquisition fee in here. And if you don't put the acquisition fee in here, when you run the cash flow analysis, the financial measurements and the cash and cash return will all get kind of screwed up because you weren't including the, those types of uh, dollars in there. All right, so that's something you need to take into consideration when you're when you finally get to the point where okay, we're going to make this deal happen, and we've got to make sure all of our numbers are in there so that we can then go off and and um, and then uh, make it happen. So LLC members uh, share of syndication zero. They're not going to get anything. It's my money. I'm the sponsor. I'm the managing member. I get to uh, decide how much I get to keep. Okay, um, then LLC member. Okay, so this is what we're going to need based upon all of this information. It's going to tell us what the total cash required for the deal is. That's from the input screen, and then we have to apply the the uh, percentage of the. Oh, come on, word. Is it going to do it for me? 
actual order. Need to do LLC members cash. So what happens here, just so you understand, in this section right here, the total cash required for this deal, it comes automatically from the input data screen. It's going to draw that in right from here, and it's going to tell you down here how much money you're going to need in order to get this uh, right here. Um, initial investment or down payment, that number right there is going to jump right on over here to this section. And let's say it's $100,000. Let's say the total cash required for this deal is $100,000. What you then do is you put $100,000 in here. Okay, well, wait a minute, Charlie. I'm, I'm confused here. Okay, let me explain. A lot of you folks are doing deals with the intent of having no skin in the game. Where the investor is paying, the investors are paying 100%. You're going out there and raising all the funds. You're syndicating the deal. You're keeping your acquisition fee, and you no know money is coming out of your pocket. That means that on this section right here, all of the cash that the property needs in order to make this deal happen is coming out of someone else's pocket. So you're gonna whatever number we figured out is is the total. Um, money cash required you're going to put it in right here if you're going to pay 10 percent down though well, then you're going to put down um 90 percent figure here okay so that's how that works and then it's going to pop over here to be 100 percent uh partnership uh money so it's going to say a managing members cash investment it's going to say zero okay so that's how you build in this partnership allocation then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to this section and you're going to make sure all these numbers look right because this is what the investor is going to see they're going to see this information this gets back to like one of the most important pages on any type of analysis and that is the what's in it for me section so there you have it with the um mr john's uh john investor 75 percent of before tax cash flow, it bills it all out for him, all right? Tells him exactly what his cash on cash return is. Why is this page important? Why am I spending time to show you how to do this? Because when you go to build your offering memorandum, all of this information is gonna appear there and this is exactly what you want them to see, okay? So, uh, let me see what's next. Um, now we've done, we've built that. So we're all set with that. Uh, now what we want to do is come up back to the confidential offering memorandum, offering summary. Okay, well, what's this? Well, this is where you're going to start to type in. Um, okay, so Andrew is saying that uh, his tab looks slightly different. It doesn't have the apply preferred. Let me go jump on back over here. Uh, apply preferred return to all managing members uh, or managing partners. Uh, is this an issue with my software? I don't think it's an, an issue with your software. Let me see if it changes, uh, if I change titles. Nope. Nope. It's all staying the same. Huh. Well, what happens if I said that there is no preferred return? Does that change anything? Nope. No, Andrew, I don't know what the problem is. I, I think it, maybe it is a, um, maybe it is something. Hey, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad Andrew asked that question because I, I forgot to tell you about this box. Show managers return on reports. No. Okay, they're going to see how much money you're, you're you're making. It's just that's they're partners of yours. But on this at this particular stage of the analysis, no, nah, I don't want to really, really show them how much money I'm making. So I put it uh, down here, uh, sh no, to run uh, show managers return on reports. Um, so Andrew, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you as to why that's different. Um, it should be okay. Everything should be all, all, all right with it. It should still work the same. But uh, that's interesting. Uh, okay, so let me jump on back over here to the not the photo, the uh, uh, right, uh, not the comps, the partnership. So we come to the section called the confidential offering uh, summary, and this is where you put in all the information. Uh, as you can see, Dobbins Law, because that's what it's, uh, that's who owns it. I've already uh, actually, if we jump over here to the company info, look at. Uh, this is where they're drawing from, okay? So if I see the property name is 123 Main Street, you know, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03060. Um, 
then I'll say done. Look at 123 Main Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. That's the property information. All comes from this company info. And from here, I can put into the, um, uh, in, insert the company logo uh, and hit done and everything pops up right there. And you get a, a really professional looking offering package starting right from here. Okay. I just wonder what, where's that end coming in from? Right there, phone number. Take that out, say done. done and there you have it my hand is gone perfect good so now you can see how we put all this information in uh, and we talk about how much money is being raised the manager all that stuff and we can put most of that information right here uh, on the uh, company information um, and as you can see remember prepared for John investor that way we know we're dealing with one person this is his package and when it comes time to uh, you know wonder hey where'd that come from um, it's all typed in right there that you're gonna see that on the final package all right company info goal seek partnership module let me jump back here uh, partner sources and uses you're gonna have a sources and uses funds now let me talk about this for a second just from a, a um, uh, you know practical concept uh, practical standpoint the sources and uses is very important, and it's going to disclose a lot to the investor. If we decide we need to raise a million dollars, the question is, well, what for? Why do you need a million dollars? Why don't you need a half million? Why don't you need two million? Why is this offering for a million dollars? When I give you a million dollars, what are you going to do with that money? Well, you're going to take that money, and, and you know, 750 is going to go go to the seller so we can buy the property and 200 uh, you know and 50,000 of that is going to go towards closing costs and then a hundred thousand of that is going to go towards my acquisition fee and the remaining 50 we're going to keep on account just to run the company as a business so that's when we talk sources sources will be all of you cash investors and the uses will be all the ways I just described that okay now that is one type of source sources and uses fun uh, report that's the one that's going to appear in the offering memorandum that's the one that's going to appear in the private placement memorandum so we disclose right up front what we're doing with the money there is another sources and uses may, uh, document and that one comes from the bank Remember how I said the closing costs were $50,000? Well, the bank is going to give you a sources and uses that shows you what the $50,000 is going for. But that's the bank's sources and uses. So I want you to understand that when you hear the word sources and uses, you're actually talking about two different sources and uses. One of them you are going to create, and one of them the bank creates for you. OK, but this is a very important document that you need to have in this section so that your investors know exactly what, what they're what you're doing with the money. OK, where am I going? Partnership sources, use and partner module. OK, good. So we've, we, now we've got so all of the things we're doing right now are we're doing to build the offering memorandum to print off correctly. OK, uh, let me see. Partnership, goal C, company info. Now, comps. This is, do we want to add a sales comp uh, report, an on-market comp, a rent comp, an in-escrow comp? You know, obviously an in-escrow or an um, in-escrow report, we don't really know. I mean, we don't know what other deals are in escrow right now. Uh, well, I mean, I'm supposed to get figured out, but we can grab other types of sales reports. We can grab, um, and remember, sales reports are, are reports of deals that have already closed versus an on-market comp report, which are properties that are on the market right now. Who's our competition? Uh, you know, that doesn't do us any good because remember what I always say what the biggest lie in multifamily is the asking price so if these haven't closed yet the numbers that we're using as comps are really just big lies and then also the rent comps now let me just show you uh, exactly what happens if you check that box that means in the final report we are going to print a page that says rent comps now you can in 
insert the information. You see here, look at it. It's grab that one two three Main Street. It tells my name over here. You're gonna put in the name of the of the of the of the property, the address, all the information about the property. You can insert a picture. Make sure you use these insert tabs here uh, for inserting the picture. You can go in here and grab one of the pictures. Uh, I'm not gonna do this right now, obviously. Uh, but you can go and use this insert tab and it'll just give you an absolutely completely um, uh, professional looking rent comp page. Sales comp is the same way. Uh, so you just do that and that's going to give you that information. OK, um, I'll leave that that box checked. Uh, see what happens. We can do the same thing for sales comp. Let me just show you how that looks. There's your sales comp. Very cool. Now, photos. You're going to use these insert tabs here to grab those photos. Did it again. It uh, pulls up the thing. You're just going to insert it. Now, one thing I highly recommend is that when you when you put the the picture in here, you can see there's the these are where the pictures go. You always put in a little description right below it. See this block below it? That allows you to tell the people what they're looking at. Um, uh, something like that along with the picture right above above it okay and that helps the person who's reading it know what they're looking at uh, those are your photos executive summary now this is the executive summary you want a picture of the property here use those insert buttons this in look at look at it's all empty why is it empty I haven't put in any any data in other words when it comes time to print off the executive summary look at all the information that you input on this software back the very first time you turned it on to look at this deal all of that, that information is now coming back into the offering memorandum and it's appearing here in a nice neat orderly fashion okay so you want to make sure all this information is accurate because this is what they're looking at and look at here folks there's your there's your notes and discussion go ahead type away tell everything you want about this property right here that's what it's there for uh, okay that's the executive and of course we do a cover check out the cover you're gonna put a picture here a picture here and then you're gonna put in property facts one by one you're gonna say what's so great about this property who did we say it was prepared for John investor there he is right there that's where his name will appear and this is going to be unique a unique package for him and when you come back and you have another person Mary Smith will make a package from Mary Smith there's Mary Smith nice neat and orderly um, there is uh, let me see partner goal seek there's one particular package um, where am I going okay cover executive now watch this this is where I think this is uh, one of the other glitches let's go down here look look at these um, executive summary now the the buttons up here w there are more buttons down here take a look at this if I click here on map I can put in a map and an aerial view of the property that map button does not appear up here you got to find it down the bottom look at there's my property description I put the picture in here I put nice little highlights about the property right here and then I type into the description and notes for free flowing form right here I can talk all about the property all right photo album I can do I've already done this with the photo album comps dashboard sales comps sales comps rent comps rent comps map and then we're going to do a bio about us. Who are we? Why should you invest with us? You know, put my pretty picture right there. And that'll tell the person why we are the, the people that they should be investing with. And then we talk about a definitions section. Do we add the definitions? Absolutely. Not everybody understands multifamily. So you want to make sure that you, um, you give them what they want. Uh, historical. How has the property performed historically? Remember, we haven't even seen this information. We have to input this one ourselves. So we're going to go back up here year to date. You know, here's 21.4, uh, you know, and then we come over. Oops, jump down to 21.3, you know, and that becomes something that we can put into 
the block and make it happen. Uh, partner dashboard, partnership cover. We already talked about the partnership cover sources. There's a notes page where we can write up other things about the deal right here. Now, look, remember, I'm just letting you know all of these tabs are down here on the bottom. Um, you know, it kind of tells you who the analysis is and who rental software is. We don't need to add that. Okay. So when you are done, and I really recommend you go and you put this information in now, especially about yourself, obviously. You want to have the bio in there about yourself. You want to have you know, pictures in there about yourself. Build it now so that when it comes time to finally print off that package for that first deal, you're going to have something already done, okay? Now, um, when it's done, check this out. You click the print button. Look at the print. Look at that. Look at all the choices, all the different pictures, graphs and tables, reports, marketing information, comp reports, the IRA module, if someone's investing with the IRA, and the partnership module. Um, my recommendation to you is that you click on all of them for your first go round. Then when you see what each page looks like, start to wean out those pages that don't tell a story or the story that you want to tell your investors. And then when you're done, you've got a package that you like that is exactly what you're going to need to get out there and sell. Okay? So this is why we do it this way. You know, you go to click on all of them, select all, and you hit print report. We'll see what happens. Put it in my PDF so you can see it on the screen. And as you can see, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, it's going to go through all the machinations. Let me see if I can move this for you. Look at all of these things. It's starting to work. Here are all the different pages. Let me just kind of jump ahead here so that we can wrap this meeting up. This is what it looks like when it's done. Actually, I think you all have this on your your um on the resources and archives. Look for something on Villa Court. And actually, I did I did a whole report one time coaching call on Villa Court. So you actually have this document right there from your group coaching archive uh, where you can find our discussion of this property. And uh, you can now see what a final package looks like. Look at where all these bullets came in. Dobbins Law, Executive Summary. A little familiar? Look at I didn't put anything in the notes discussion. Shame on me. I should have built it in there. Uh, you know, here, but look at I had a nice little printout here, the property description, description, the property, the offering, the opportunity, seller financing provided, 16% cash on cash return. Uh, yeah, let me just see if we can. Um, uh, let's put it on the desktop. Maybe it's going to pop open. Uh, market cap rate, 6.5. Selling cap rate, 8.85. I mean, look, it really did a... Uh, Pretty good, um, pretty good sales job here because the property did not perform very well in the year after that uh, we made this presentation. They got hit with a couple of big expenses, and uh, well, that's the way it goes. See, here's the, here are all the pictures and the descriptions right underneath it. Uh, okay, well, that's too bad. Maybe I'm not going to be able to show it to you. Um, let's see what happened there. No rent roll summary. Put it to, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but you guys can uh, can go take a look at it. It's all on the website, a, a pod, catch and cash return, all the tables. Really cool stuff. Uh, really uh, great stuff. You guys look like a professional. I mean, and, and remember, the, the reason this is, I'm coming in for landing here, so if anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them in the box. But what we're trying to do here is I'm, I want you to understand that once you, you – Let's kind of take you through the step-by-step -step process here. You're going to find find an offering. You're going to analyze it on this software. You're going to figure out what the right price is for you. You're going to make an offer at that price. You're going to go back and forth over the negotiation. You're going to get a deal under contract. You're going to go out and do the due diligence. You're going to make sure the deal is what they say it is. Once it is, you're going to go to go. Once it is, 
once at the end of the due diligence process that you determine that you're ready to move forward with this deal as it is, that's when all of this stuff starts to come into play. That's when you need to start building this, this uh, offering memorandum based upon the information. You're going to be going to your bank. Your bank is going to be telling you what your terms are going to be. That gets re-input into the software so that the numbers are correct, the debt coverage ratio and all that other stuff uh, is correct. You're going to be going out to the, to the money, to the market to try to find money. You're going to be doing it on, um, on you know, my, the crowdfunding portal. You're going to be doing it with your friends and family. You're going to be out there selling your deal every single day, raising money. All right. Then, and really what you need to be doing now is working with these potential investors, telling them why multifamily is the way to go. That's really what you should be doing. So then this document is going to become one of the documents that goes up on the crowdfunding portal. So somebody in, in East Oshkosh uh, in, who's looking to invest $10,000 of their bonus money into a deal will look at your deal and say, okay, I, I want in on that particular deal. So they go and they put $10,000 into that, into that deal uh, because they've looked at your offering memorandum package and the other documents that are on the website so that they can become part of your family. And those other documents are what we're going to be talking about uh, next time we chat. Um, so that is really it. And let me just give you one final little um, little story here as soon as I can. Uh, let me go back down here. Um, there we go, folks. Okay, now. I have to redo this recording. It didn't work. Out of all the times I've been doing recordings, I have never had one that didn't work. Wouldn't you believe one of the best, best recordings I've ever done, and it didn't get recorded. It was so good, we have to do it again. And so in the next two weeks to a month, my accountant and I are going to sit back down probably right here in my office with my microphone, and the two of us are going to be talking to each other about, about how to start your own property management business. I'm not kidding you. He and I did it for an hour a couple of weeks ago. If you were live, you heard it. If you missed it, you missed it. But I don't want you to miss it because it was so good. So I'm going to record this again, and we're going to post this back up, uh, and we're just going to make it happen for everybody because uh, it was gold. It was absolute gold. So um, that is it, folks. That's the end of the end of my show today, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, worked out well for you. Uh, but um, if anybody has any questions, you always know how to get a hold of me, and I uh, look forward to speaking with you anytime you need me. Just let me know. All right, everybody, thank you, and uh, have a great day.